Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Palestinians protest Israeli forestation plan in Nakab. Detainees at Rikers Island launch hunger strike. Muslim tribals targeted by demolition drive in India's Jammu and Kashmir. And French teachers strike for better COVID-19 protocols. In our first story, we look at the violent crackdown by Israeli forces on Palestinian Bedouins in Al Nakab or Negev this week. The region has seen sustained protests this week against the destruction of farming lands by the Jewish National Fund or the JNF. Around 300,000 Palestinian Bedouins who hold Israeli citizenship live in the Nakab. Out of this, more than 90,000 live in and around 35 villages deemed unrecognized by Israel. These villages are cut off from basic infrastructure and are under constant threat of demolition. In 2016, the JNF and Israel's Planning and Building Committee approved a plan to plant trees on 500 hectares of land in the Nakab region. The agency began forestation in the Al Nakir area in December. The fertile area is home to six Palestinian villages and nearly 30,000 people. On January 10th, the JNF bulldozers arrived in the village of Al Atrash, accompanied by hundreds of Israeli police officers. The farming lands being used by the Bedouins to cultivate wheat and barley were then raised. As local Palestinian residents began protesting, they were met with brutal violence. At least seven people were detained. The crackdown continued on Tuesday after Israeli forces tore down sit-in tents in the Al Atrash and Al Sawar villages. Both villages were sealed off and around 20 people were arrested. Violence was reported again on Thursday as hundreds of people gathered to protest the destruction of their lands. As per local reports, Israeli forces also used stun grenades, rubber-coated metal bullets, tear gas and skunk water. Lawyers told Al Jazeera that at least 80 Palestinians had been arrested since Monday. Next, we go to the United States, where a hunger strike is underway at the Rikers Island jail complex. 200 people detained at the Robert N. Davron Center launched the action on January 8. According to the New York Country Defender Service, the issues raised include a lack of proper medical care, Detainees are also unable to access the law library and their mail is either delayed or lost. They are also protesting the continued adjournment of court dates. An estimated 5,400 people are being held at Rikers Island, most of whom are still awaiting trial. The complex is known for abusive and unsafe conditions, overcrowding and a lack of proper food and sanitation. Detainees have also pointed to lack of mental health services. Fifteen people died at Rikers in 2021. At least five of these were cases of suicide. The pandemic, coupled with issues like absenteeism among jail staff, has made conditions worse. Less officers has meant that people are unable to attend crucial court dates or medical appointments. Less than half of the detainees have been vaccinated and over 300 have recently tested positive for COVID. As per local reports, hunger strikers have stated that they have not been allowed recreation time. They are also facing severe cold in the jail dormitories. As the protests entered its fifth day on Thursday, people gathered outside the facility to express their solidarity. They raised long-standing demands for decarceration, ensuring basic services, and an end to solitary confinement. Now we look at protests that were held in Jammu and Kashmir on January 12th against a demolition drive by local authorities. As per local reports, 17 families belonging to the Muslim Gujar Bakarwal tribe lost their homes. The demolition was carried out by the Jammu Development Authority and the police in Rupnagar. It was billed as an anti-encroachment drive of, on land belonging to the state. Videos posted on social media showed people pleading with officials to spare their houses. The Gujar Bakarwal people are traditionally nomadic pastoralists and are among the region's most marginalized groups. A local resident told NewsClick that the affected families had been living in the area for 70 years. They were also not informed of the demolitions beforehand. 
protesters gathered in Jammu city on Wednesday to demand compensation for the affected families. The Jammu Development Authority has been repeatedly accused of carrying out selective eviction drives. According to local news portal, the Kashmirwala, the JDA has evicted several hundred families from supposed government land in Jammu city alone. At least 54 Gujar Bakarwal families were expelled from Jammu city's Sidra area in 2017. And now for our final story, tens of thousands of teachers across France held a one-day strike on January 13th. The action was organized to protest the government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. France is witnessing a surge in infections with records of nearly 370,000 new cases daily. The government has kept schools open and all students who have come in contact with an infected pupil must get tested three times. Thursday's strike was organized by 11 unions who have accused the government of incessant changes to COVID-19 rules and unworkable protocols. According to the Interior Ministry, 78,000 teachers participated in the protest on Thursday. According to the SNUIP union, 75% of teachers in primary schools and 62% in high schools went on strike. Protest rallies were held in cities across France, including Paris, Bordeaux, Marcel, Nice and Toulouse. Teachers demanded better communication from the government and stable rules. More specifically, they asked for safety measures, including protective gear in schools. Protesters also raised slogans against the education minister, Jean-Michel Blanquer, and demanded his resignation. A meeting was also held between the government and union leaders on Thursday. Blanquer announced later that 5 million high-grade FFP2 masks would be provided mainly for nursery school teachers. He also stated that more substitute teachers would be sent in to replace sick teachers. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.